I am Doug Keck, and this is EWTN's Bookmark. Our guest author is Mary Claire Kendall, author of Oasis, Conversion Stories of Hollywood Legends, published by Franciscan Media, available through our religious catalog, EWTNRC.com. Mary Claire, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you, Doug. And have you down here for Bookmark after all these years. I noticed this book a couple of years ago. I'm finally had an opportunity to bring you down and talk to you about it. I'm an old movie buff, mm. spent a lot of time watching old movies, worked on the American Movie Classics uh, startup and that particular channel. And it's always interesting, I think, and that's what you point out, the out conversion stories, when there are famous, well-known people. Mm -hmm. It does have an impact. Why do you think that is? Well, because um, people basically, they, they look at their lives and they say, this is somebody I want to emulate. And then when they when they have a, a faith, um, a, you know, they, they have a spiritual thread and something that really moves them, the person looks and says, that moves me because mm -hmm. I'm so moved by his talent of all the, everything in the, in the right. life that I admire. And this is, um, it it's really has a powerful impact. You actually saw something on Betty Hutton on, t uh, on Turner Classic Movies, is that what? Well, that, actually what happened, that was, that was the first, back in 2000, I was doing political reporting for the National Catholic Register, mm -hmm. and I, I saw, I just kind of saw it quickly, and then after a friend of mine um, d died, it was the third anniversary of her death, rather, and I was just, at that point I was in a transition, and I was just riveted. Mm -hmm. It was in 2006, October. 2006, and I and I right right away dug in, and I reached out to, to Betty. I wanted to try and interview her, but she was not long for this world. And um, and so, but I I I just was I just I was like a kid in a candy shop, just ate right. up her life. And she was so um, her story was so um, absolutely dynamic right. because of what she had hit rock bottom. She was the template. A lot of people don't really know her because mm -hmm. she was the template. She hit rock bottom and then recovered right. and found um, found herself rather than she was the commodity in Hollywood. And she said, but then she found she, this priest. She was in a rehab center mm -hmm. um, there sh um, wanting to kill herself like um, uh, her good friend Judy Garland. And she saw this priest checking in his mm -hmm. bombed cook. And he was so gentle. She was like throwing up and and she couldn't believe how saintly he was, and she said to herself, he's going to save my life, and by Jim right. Go, he did. Um, and, and then, uh, yeah. Then you have that whole story about Betty Hutton. It's also interesting, too, let's just mention a couple of the names, people, Alfred Hitchcock, Gary Cooper, Bob Hope, Mary Astor, John Wayne, Ann Southern, uh, people remember Ann, certainly from the 50s, especially on television, Jane Wyman, of course, uh, the connection with Ronald Reagan, Susan Hayward, maybe that's a surprise, Lana Turner, and this one, I didn't realize Ann Miller, mm. uh, that Ann Miller was, and she has a particularly kind of interesting story. And then Patricia Neal, who I was somewhat aware of because uh, Mother Dolores, mm -hmm. uh, the famous actress mm -hmm. who became, and, and you have a picture inside the book of, mm -hmm. uh, of her, and along with her is actually Gary Cooper's daughter, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. people can see that on the screen. And so that was kind of interesting. Those gives you uh, people a taste of all the diverse different people you talk about. But in the introduction, you say, early on I was marketing Gary Cooper's faith journey, mm -hmm. which may, most people didn't know about. The editor of the LA-based magazine told me she was only interested in his external life. Yeah, I know that was yeah because I um, I so right um, so Betty Hutton AC Lyles had introduced me to Betty Hutton and then he introduced me to Gary Cooper's daughter because I was just as I say I was riveted by these mm -hmm. stories and um, I gosh I thought this story was gonna I thought they were gonna be absolutely falling all over themselves for it and it was just his external life i.e. Right. The, the 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 scandal right. the, <laughs> or the you know right whatever, you know, that Hollywood eats up. Well, well is it because the, the whole religious thing is not something they're particularly looking to promote? Because in a sense, it seems like what you get out of these stories are really stories of redemption, because what you get from here is not people who, I hate to say it on one level, grew up Catholic or decided to become Catholic, and from the moment they became Catholic, they were wonderful, pious uh -huh. people who went to Mass 24-7. Mm -hmm. These are people who live tough lives, mm -hmm. dealt with very difficult systems, which I think we're starting to see more and more in our recent headlines of what it's really like mm -hmm. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and realize that was also going on mm -hmm. in the glittery days of Hollywood, mm -hmm. and that so many of these people overcame so much, mm -hmm. and it was because of their faith that they ended up coming through it. Oh, yeah. Um, right, right, absolutely. I, 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 um, that's right, that's right. Um, they um, really, 
I think Hollywood now, that when you say they weren't receptive, um, I think it's because if, if you're sort of numb to it, mm -hmm. if you're not religious and it's kind of like you're you're just not sensitized it's not, not understandable it's, you don't yeah, get it yeah it's, it's like talking here. Chinese yeah. I'm like right. okay well maybe we don't want to publish a Chinese article today <laughs> so um, yeah I think or pe people are more the the here and the now and the the you know uh, just so their their senses right. are so filled and they just they, um, so it's it, it, it's tough it's a tough battle trying to get down right. to the spiritual right and, and you talk about how no one can know for certain the actual inner life of anybody uh, besides, you know, what you can see on the outside, the conversion, but you say the trick is to try to understand the journey and all that led up to it. Right. And, and one of the connections you have here is what is fascinating is how the arc of each of their lives followed somewhat similar patterns and rhythms, but then the human experience is unalterable. And then you have a quote from Hemingway yeah. about the, the fact that every man's life ends up the same way. And it's kind of interesting because there's a connection also with Gary Cooper in the story with Hemingway, right? Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, after I wrote about Gary Cooper, that, then I started that I started focusing on Hemingway because it was the 50th anniversary of his death. Um, he took his own life. He was terribly mentally ill. But um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. no, the Hem Hemingway and C Cooper were just very good friends. Mm -hmm. um, and Cooper, when he when he died, he he just before he died, he wanted um, Hemingway to know that the best thing he had ever done was to become a Catholic. And he was just um, so um, right. he wanted Hemingway was, was ter suffering terribly, and I think he wanted to right. kind of buttress Hemingway Help morally. Him. Right, and also he wanted to make it clear that it wasn't his wife's arm twisting that right. forced made him become a Catholic. Well, yeah, 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 yeah th I think there's a, a little bit of that there, although I don't think that was ever, that was pretty much, and that's the story yeah. I tell, because right. uh, that's, that's, I think people do think that it was um, Rocky Cooper who kind of, no, no, as, as the daughter said, nobody made Gary Cooper do anything mm -hmm. that he didn't want to do, believe me. And they talked to the priest the, um, and him, mm -hmm. Father here, um, Tough stuff. Ford. They talked about um, scuba. Di they went scuba diving right. and talked about sports and guns. And and finally, the conversation right. did drift to spiritual things. But um, but no way. And also, an important thing. No way was it the deathbed conversion. Right. Conversion. You say, and this is kind of what we alluded to before. Hollywood itself. It's a world that is particularly unique and perhaps unparalleled in creating the crisis of soul that can lead to conversion. Why do you think that's the case? Um, because of the pressure, the money, the celebrity, the fame, the, I mean, you just, you kind of turn in on yourself or you, you become sort of a god yourself. And, um, um, and that's ridiculous because, you know. Because that's you know that's the truth inside. <laughs> yeah. And people are looking at you like you're perfect and I, you know all your foibles. Oh, there you go. Right, right. There you go. There you go. That, right. Yeah, so it's like, right, right. That's, and also the actor with that world with the actor personality the two are just combustible mm -hmm. and it's just you don't understand the the acting um, we people don't I'm not saying you but people don't right. necessarily appreciate the acting um, person persona and how and I, I guess right. why I, I'm a writer I guess the sensitivities that I have probably I can I can um, divine you know um, and I've well there's an old story I don't know through. if it's true or not and he's not in the book because he wasn't he wasn't a Catholic but uh, somebody went up to Cary Grant and said that they wish they could be Cary Grant and he said I wish I could be him too <laughs> right you know? he was Archie Leach no right. oh, that's I would love to write about him I um, right yeah right, exactly and it's interesting too here you also say during Hollywood's golden age a proportionally higher number of stars gravitated to the Catholic faith. Why do you think that is? Right, and that's more anecdotal. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've had people say, is that really true? Mm -hmm. But I think, um, well, during the Golden Age, there were more Catholics <laughs> in Hollywood, <laughs> you know, Spencer, Tr just Car um, Clark Gable, just the whole uh, list. I, and I think there, there was two, there was um, a lot of, um, the, tr the church I think was more, um, it had more, s well, it, it knew its identity. Right. I went. Th I think it went through an identity crisis w with uh, the cultural, um, it, uh, the changes right, in the sixties, seventies. Right. Like that, so the right. church knew who it was. In chapter one, Betty Hutton told priests she met in Rhode Island in the seventies, practically all the stars are in trouble. It's a story as old as the Hollywood itself. Stars so talented at portraying human frailty are themselves often all to human. And there's a picture actually of uh, Spencer Tracy and a picture of his son oh, yeah. that, that's in here. And I know that you talk about the fact of uh, uh, some of the actors referring to Spencer Tracy and the idea of he could do what he could do because of his own frailty. Yeah. Um, 
Well, Sp uh, Spencer Tracy, that's right, that's right, because of the angst, the, ang the deep angst in his soul, he was, he was such an um, amazing actor. That's, that's the, that's the um, story of the great actors, they have great, great personal And he grew up suffering. actually very Catholic, he went to Jesuit schools and he actually thought about being a priest, and yeah. in some ways, I think in here there's even reference to thinking maybe he felt guilty about the fact that maybe he hadn't taken that path. Well, because his father, his father was such a huge presence at wanting him to be a, a priest. I, I think um, he had the soul of an actor. I mean, I, I, I think that's clear. It's, it's really a shame that he didn't, uh, that he didn't have a, somebody to give him better formation. It's interesting, too, in reading through these stories, of, uh, you know, the countless infidelities and, and, and the abortions that, yeah. you know, were the that were going on at the time, just called euphemistically other things, et cetera. And you got even Joe Kennedy having to do with the situation with uh, Gloria Swanson yeah. uh, and those kinds of situations. I put that Gloria Swanson story in that introductory chapter to show the contrast um, to, you know, it, it was really, it was really sad. I mean, she, um, anyway, you have to read it, but it's really sad how she really did, did drink the Kool-Aid and, um, and it was just shocking. But um, I think, though, um, later on, she was very, right. she was very um, repentant when. Um, right. It's interesting too, because you even have, uh, in a sense, different families. I mean, the idea of the Barrymore family, where you've got John and Jack, uh, you know, got, I mean, kind of living a uh, yeah. somewhat re resolute life there, a yes. resolute life. Yes. And, and but Ethel Barrymore was much different. Oh. Well, Ethel Barrymore, I think she, she, she was very, um, she was a very cultured woman, very refined. She was, she, after her mother died, she had to rise to the responsibility. It was just, you know, who she, who she was as a person. She didn't, she didn't succumb. Of course, her father, she saw her father, what, how he, how he lived and how his life was so tragic. Mm -hmm. So I think, and saw how he treated um, the mother. Um, but she just, it was grace. <laughs> It was grace. You say recovery is often as much, if not more, a matter of the soul as the body. And then you make a point I thought was interesting. Many stars so skilled at listening finally hear the voice of God. <laughs> That's an interesting idea. That's right, because to be a good actor, and they say Gary Cooper was such a good listener. That's right, yeah. Um, right, so the Holy Spirit finally, finally gets through. Also, you've got Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, some people have heard about him. There were some movies that portrayed him in different ways. But he grew up in a very, very Orthodox Catholic family in England. Yes. Yes, yes, he did. He did. Uh, Orthodox and, and very kind of irreverent. And um, he, you know, so, yeah. So he, right. and he, at, at night, his mother, you know, did his uh, evening confession, mm -hmm. I guess, his examination of conscience. conscience. Right, I mean, exactly, it was just right. Amazing. Yeah. It's interesting, too, because. Uh, uh, the virtue his parents and teachers inculcated in him also shined through an authorized biographer, John Russell Taylor, writes, he did not go to parties, he did not have affairs with glamorous stars, he did not really do anything but make pictures. Yeah, that's the only thing he could do in life is make pictures, which pretty good, mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty good for yourself. And I thought this was a great <laughs> connection, too, about a father, Hanergy, you point out, St. Ignatius had a, this was a school he went to as a youth, had a master of discipline, so if any of the boys misbehaved during the day, the master of discipline would deal with them at the day's end, living, leaving you in suspense <laughs> all day, yeah. wondering what he's going to do to you. Out of that experience was born the master <laughs> of suspense. Right, <laughs> right, right. Came from a Jesuit, his Jesuit um, experience. And also at the end of his life, uh, he actually asked to, to go to confession, and, and he actually hadn't been practicing, right. so he actually did his confession answers in Latin. Yes, he, yes, he, he um, well, that, that was the, 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 the mass, the communion, right, right, uh, right. The, um, right. Uh, well, he, he wasn't, his, his granddaughter, he, he, he just had his wife, what, I mean, what happened is Alma converted, right. and so then she drifted away, and then he drifted with, but he would, when the grandchildren would come, that he would make sure right. they went to church. So he was just a right. little tepid, you know, like so many people who call themselves, right. you know, devout Catholics. Right. But he recognized that right. it had, he had. And you're right, he was talking about mass. I was thinking as well that shortly after meeting with Ingrid Bergman, he, call, he called Father Sullivan and said he wanted to go to confession. Yes, yes, that was beautiful because Ingrid, he, I mean, he was scared. He, he was scared he was going to, he was going to die. And, and she said, you know, we're, we're all going to die. <laughs> and oh, beautiful. Right, now Gary Cooper, uh, you know, great movies. 
that he had a very real spirituality about him. Right, from growing up um, with, he was very good friends with uh, his the I American Indians there mm -hmm. in Montana. Mm -hmm. So he's just soaked that in now. Um, and then he, d he, he was Epis Episcopalian. He wasn't really particularly religious, right. but had the, you know, the, 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 the training. But, and then got to Hollywood, and, and he was just the female magnet. He was so <laughs> gorgeous, and got into affairs, and right. you know, and realized that you know, at the en toward the end of his life, that he he recognized that he, with great gratitude right. all God's blessings. But then he hadn't always. He said, "I had been doing all I wanted to do my whole life, and it uh, also wasn't the most polite thing." Right, but Coop, old boy, you owe something, somebody, something for all your good fortune. I guess that's what started me thinking seriously about my religion. I'll never be anything like a saint. I know I just haven't got that kind of fortitude. The only thing I can say for me is that I'm trying to be a little better. Maybe I'll succeed. It's also interesting because there's a connection between Gary Cooper, of course, and Patricia Neal, yes. who you also have in, yes, in the yes. book. What's yes, yes, yes. What's that connection? So the, the, the connection is that they made um, the Fountainhead, mm -hmm. and and they fell in love. But and and usually with the, with the stars, you know, with the affairs, they usually. You know the love scene on screen went off screen, mm -hmm. and um, but the, in this can, in this case it was after the filming wrapped, and it was a very serious, and that that busted up the the family for a time. Although they 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 went on that high noon junket together, they they stayed in touch, um, and and um, gradually um, it's it's a beautiful beautiful story how Rocky rather than mm -hmm. becoming bitter became a better woman, right. and 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 after he f um, finished filming Return to Paradise um, about a father returns to, to care for a 16 year old daughter Maria was 16 he mm -hmm. returned to the family mm -hmm. I happened I think maybe the the visit with the Pope m might have right. been, had a salutary effect it was just he well Maria Maria I interviewed her mm -hmm. um, had a really good interview and 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 really he he, he enjoyed his bachelor life but he knew right. he wasn't really happy right. and he knew he had to straighten up his his life so he was putting his life together and, and she said bits and pieces putting it together right. in a different way waking up to the reality and he just he, he was lucky that that his wife was Catholic and that he did right. um, s become Catholic because and then after the fact he realized wow right. <laughs> he had just you know, hit the jackpot lucky had uh, somebody with stalwart faith yeah. Mary Astor as many people remember uh, from the Maltese Falcon yeah. and some other great movies uh, and it talks about her having this kind of experience she was one night when she opened a little porcelain snuff box where she kept a rosary she smelled roses Mike teased her about it, asking if she'd been praying to St. Therese. Father O'Day, too, downplayed it. But in her mind, there was no doubt it was a miracle, prompting her to review all the truths of the faith with, with Father O'Day, where she yeah. goes on to say, Jesus Christ is God. And she had what she believed was her own illumination, writes, an actual physical brilliance, she said. Mm, isn't that interesting? I mean, actual, yeah, she had to, um, she had to um, block it. Because, no, it was miraculous. I, I, it does, it does appear to be the case, and and um, Saint Teresa of Lisieux is very active, and that was, right. yeah, that was a turning point. <laughs> right, and one of the last movies she made it was a place called Saturday in 1968. The latter about a woman who had an abortion and struggles with the aftermath. And again, that was her book. Okay. That was her, the, the, the last her book. Yeah, the, okay. the last book she she left oh, acting. Okay. Gotcha. Yes, she to write. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously she was reflected because she right. she had had she um, and she was very regretful. Yeah, it's right. beautiful, but um, it was um, well, it's it's a long story. Her husband, she was married to Kenneth Hawks, right? Um, who the brother of Howard Hawks, the direct, right. famous director, and he he had some issues um, that he was dealing with, and so they th it was you know kind of mm -hmm. slow and cons consummated in the marriage, and of course right. she had had that tour affair with John Barrymore, so she was um, you know. It was difficult for her, right. and then she had this affair with this Hollywood real estate guy who tried to. But Ken was very loyal, but then and, and then had the abortion. Right. Was he the one who was killed uh, in, in mm -hmm. the accident? Right mm -hmm. when they were shooting yeah. over the ocean. Yeah. Right. The, the two stints and yeah, flyers some in the, came, the sun. film plane, and then it came. Yeah. In. And, right. and they were a cute couple. Um, it was really, really tragedy. Right. Well, it's interesting too because it's clear that one thing's a thread that runs through here: all the guys had wandering eyes. And in many cases, the women were the ones who seemed to, and maybe since way it is life, and suffer the most. And in many cases, dealing with things like, uh, you know, attempting suicide. Yeah. Well, I think because we talk about the abortion, I think in Hollywood at that time, 
your it was you know your career would be over. It was a it was a different time. Um, so uh, Ingrid Bergman, actually, to her credit, she. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a big scandal, but she didn't have yeah, the abortion. And so, that. and that, of course, causes all kinds of pain. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mary Astor, but it, they're all different. Mary Astor, and I, I really don't think she tried to kill herself. I think it was mm -hmm. just, it was the circumstances, well, as I explained. Well, she ended up with cirrhosis of the liver, didn't she? Right, but right, she was so. always escaping, because her father was very abusive. Mm -hmm. So, um, but... Um, Anyway, I'm sort of all over the place right. here, but but um, it's all different. But the women, yes, the women, uh, it's more of a burden. The right. the man, the male, the way the males are, and then the right. women, it's a burden. For Another them. connection between two of the stories and Southern, I think Susan Hayward, I believe, it was Richard Egan, yeah, uh, the actor who people will remember if the 300 Spartans, the original version of that, he was King Leonidas, and he was also uh, well known for being in Demetrius and the Gladiators, which is where he met. Susan Hayward. Yeah. And you talk about that yeah. in the book. So he, he has a connection and he actually, I had no idea that his, his brother was a Jesuit priest. So he was part of what was the kind of like the Catholic cabal. We had Irene Dunn, Loretta Young, uh, Roz Russell, etc. Some of those who right. were part of that community. Right. right. And it is interesting that he, he wanted to marry Susan Hayward and she didn't. But then she subsequently met um, the um, Eaton Chalkley, Floyd Eaton Chalkley, who was the Southern gentleman, very right. Catholic, right. and that's how she became Catholic. Right, and that was like his last uh, kind of wish to her. He didn't know he was going to die right away, right. but he kind of said he was fearful about her eternity, so yeah. to speak, and, and she had agreed to uh, become Catholic. Yeah. Uh, the other one I was thinking about with, uh, you've got Patricia Neal and, and her relationship with uh, obviously uh, Mother Dolores, yeah. Hope, and, and she said she was her right. closest friend. How did they get to be such close friends? Um, because, and this is such an interesting story, so Maria, it, it's, it's just, it, this, uh, um, so Maria had famously spat on Patricia Neal during the affair, which uh, Maria was a teenager, you right. know, a young girl, right, right. in public, and then Patricia, after she had her stroke, Maria reached out to her in forgiveness and healing and wrote to her and said, I forgive you. It was mm -hmm. just, and that, ah, that was so helpful to Patricia. And then, mm -hmm. and then they ran into each other in Nice, France. Just, it was all, it was a whole happenstance, Holy Spirit. And um, gradually they got together and, and then she suggested when Patricia was having such difficulties, her husband left, you know, it was just a real bad scene and her, their marriage split up. Mm -hmm. The the um, author um, Roland Dahl, the child of children's book. Yeah, everybody. So knows. then she Charlie was a mess. Charlie the Chocolate Factory, etc. Patricia Neal was going to write a scathing book, and she was a mess. She she was just, and and she Maria suggested she go to the Abbey, and and Patricia thought, uh, you know, she brought her alcohol. She thought, mm -hmm. are you kidding? And she went to the Abbey, and you know that that's how they, they she got to know Mother right. Mother Dolores Hart, and they became right. best friends. One, one quick one, Ann Miller, a uh, great dancer. Uh, she got her first uh, instructions early on from uh, Bilbo Jangles Robertson. Yes, Interesting story yes, you got there. Yes. And she said, I was respectable. I became a Hollywood star on my talent, not on casting couches, she writes. If I had gone that route, I could have been a bigger star. Right. That's the name of the game in Finlandia. That's right. That's right. So actually, Louis B. Mayer wanted to marry her. So. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting story. <laughs> but, right? but no, but but she. Yeah, that's right. She she was a good girl. Mm -hmm. She took her mother under her wings. Her mother, who was uh, legally blind, and um, she she basically right. started working and helping her earn a living because the her, her right. parents split up. And so, of all the stories you wrote about, which was the one that impacted you personally the most? Do you think? Um, I I think the Betty. I mean, all of them do. Um. I, I think they're all riveting. Mm -hmm. I know that's that's a dodge. Um, Patricia Neal, absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. I love Gary Cooper's story. All the women, I think, yeah. more I resonate with, right, though. Right, um, sure. right, exactly. Very much. And the book resonates with anybody who is interested in their faith, let alone uh, remembers all those great stars when stars were stars, yes. I think some people would say. Uh, another book in the works for you? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm actually, I'm working on a book about Ernest 
Hemingway, mm -hmm. and um, so because he he was a, a Catholic convert a mm -hmm. um, hundred years ago in July, uh, he was anointed on the battlefield. Um, I'm also working on a, a sequel to this. Much more ahead. I'm sure there's a lot of other stories, Oasis conversion stories of Hollywood legends. Oh, thank, thank you so much for spending the time, oh, Mary Claire my. Kendall is the author of this fine work available through the EWTN Religious Catalog. EWTNRC.com is the place to find it. I love Hollywood stories. These are encouraging stories for all of us. See you next time right here on Bookmark. Thanks.